Coming up on Retiring Well with Michael Reese. This is probably the hardest question you would ever be asked, financially speaking, in your lifetime. Well, think about what happens when you leave your surviving spouse a big IRA. You have just left an account that at where every distribution is taxable, big old taxable liability in, a, in essence, to someone who is going to become a single taxpayer, someone whose tax rates are going to go through the roof. That's a great idea. Let's leave a big old taxable account to someone who's going to suddenly pay a bunch of taxes. Good job. No, leave her life insurance. It's tax-free. Way better deal. Now, the host of Retiring Well, Michael Reese. Welcome to the show today. We have 30 minutes of action-packed information specifically designed for you. Retiring Well starts right here, right now. Retiring Well with Michael Reese. Helping you make smart decisions with your money so you can live a better life. Today is the day you can take back control of your money. Retiring Well with Michael Reese, where we believe your best is yet to come. Today in CFP Talk, we are going to talk about pension buyouts. Now, here's the thing. This might be something you've never heard of before, and it may or might not affect you at some point in your life. But here's the deal with pension buyouts. They're becoming a very big deal. See, here's what's happening. Let's say you worked for a company all your life, and as part of your compensation, you were given a pension. And let's imagine that here you go, you're getting ready to retire, or maybe you're already retired, and you're going to get, or you will receive, a pension of $2,000 a month or $24,000 a year for the rest of your life. In fact, you might even have um, one of these deals where uh, if you're married, uh, when you die, uh, a certain percentage of that may continue to your surviving spouse, maybe 50% or 75 maybe all of it. So a traditional pension, what we're talking about here, it's kind of like Social Security. You get income for as long as you live, uh, and when you die, there's nothing left. That's it. Nothing left. All done. Now, here's the deal. Companies who provide these pensions are essentially on the hook. They have the liability to pay you that $2,000 a month, $24,000 a year for as long as you live. When you're working, that's fine by them because when you're working, they're not paying any money out. They're just setting money aside. The money's growing. Maybe they're collecting some fees on that money. But when you're retired, they have to pay that for your lifetime. It's their obligation to you. And what's happening today with investing in the markets? You know, 20 years ago, we could go out and get a 10-year government bond paying 6.5%. What's that same 10-year government bond paying these companies today? More like 1.5%. So if you are the company and you are obligated to pay all this out, you're saying to yourself, wait a minute, you're running the numbers and you're saying, man, I don't like this. I don't want that liability. I'm not making any money on this. All I have is a liability. I want to get out of this deal. I want to buy these retirees out. I don't want to do this anymore. That's what the companies are saying. So what are they doing? They're coming to people just like you and they're saying, you know what? Let's do this money haul thing. Let's make a deal. Right? That's what they say. Let's make a deal. Here's what we want to do. We want to do a pension buyout program. Here's what we'd like to do with you, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Retiree. Um, we are currently obligated to pay you $24,000 a year for as long as you live. But when you die, there isn't going to be any money left over. How about we do something like this? How about we give you a lump sum and we don't have to give you any more money? So it's always dependent on how old you are. There's all these crazy calculations. But let's imagine, let's imagine that you're, I don't know, let's say you're 70 years old. And they come to you and they say, tell you what, here's what we'll do. We're going to give you a lump sum of $300,000. 
And what they do is they put it into an IRA in your name. That's how it works. We will deposit into an IRA in your name $300,000. And in return, we don't have to pay you that money anymore. We're all done. We'll, we'll go our separate ways. You invest this um, to do whatever you want with it. We go away. What do you think? Should you take that deal? Should you take that deal? <sighs> Folks. I gotta tell you something. This is probably the hardest question you would ever be asked, financially speaking, in your lifetime. This is one of the hardest things, because you know what, here's what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, that's, oh, gee, of course I'll take that deal. I can take that money, I can invest it, I can just take out 24,000 a year, that's not that much. I'll probably have money left over for my kids. Ah, but wait a minute. In this particular example, I look at this, I say, well, wait a minute. That is 8%. That's an 8% income stream. Can you make that last for your lifetime? I sure as heck would be a little worried about that. What if you live to your 90, 95? You might be out of money. Folks, this is a very tough decision. If you are facing a decision like this, or you have questions about anything else that we talk about on the show, by all means, pick up the phone, give us a call. We'd love to talk to you and help you with decisions just like these. It's your retirement. How will you live it? How will you be remembered? Will you be able to take me on vacation? Will you be there for my ball game? Will you teach me your values? Will you be able to play with me? Oh, help me go to college. How will I remember you? Have the retirement you dream about. Contact us today. It has always been important to us here at Centennial Wealth Advisory to give back to the wonderful Northern Michigan community where Larry, Art, and I were born and raised. Here at Centennial Wealth Advisory, we have always had a soft spot for children. Amongst our team here, there are many children, grandchildren, and special nieces and nephews. Over the past couple of years, Centennial Wealth Advisory and many of its clients have been proud supporters of Bethany Christian Services and their efforts to help children right here in Northern Michigan. Our very own Art Canfield and his wife Michelle have helped foster children through Bethany and in November 2015 adopted an amazing little guy, Braden. It's remarkable to see the difference they've made in his life over the past couple of years. We're extending an invitation to you to come and join us on Tuesday, October 25th to learn more not only about Bethany Christian Services and the children's and families' lives they've impacted, but also from estate planning attorney Mike Swagger and the expertise he offers when you're looking to support any nonprofit organization. Centennial Wealth Advisory's Larry Flynn will also be sharing the retirement planning and tax benefits of supporting charitable organizations. We assure you there's no required gifting or donations. This is simply intended to be an educational event to help you understand the great benefits you can enjoy during and after your lifetime by supporting charitable organizations. We truly hope you'll take advantage of this great opportunity. This week, uh, as you can tell, we've got banks here. She just keeps getting bigger. Uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to check in and see how she's doing with her sector investing. Because uh, if you've been watching the show, you know, oh, about four to six weeks ago, we had her pick some sectors uh, to invest in. And we wanted to see, you know, maybe she'd be better at this. We started off uh, having her try to pick a stock, and, you know, she didn't do, do so well on that one. So we thought maybe that's just too much for her. So we tried sector investing. So I'm going to go ahead and take a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and roll uh, about a minute of that film. Uh, so you all, if you didn't see this, so you can watch Bank pick her sectors. Oh, she smells it. All right. First one she picked was cash. That's Banks the first right now. Oh, there she goes. She went for gold. All right, puppy, there you go. Gold it is. So we have cash. And we have gold. Apparently, Banks is going defensive on us. So, uh, you know, we'll All right, back. we're back. So 
Uh, <laughs> as you can see, when she picked the sectors uh, due to her uh, choice of dog treats, I guess, um, she ended up picking cash and gold. Well, let's see how my baby banks here is doing so far. So I've got the uh, results here in front of me. Um, here we go. Uh, over the last uh, four to six weeks, uh, according, I'm recording this about a month after she picked them, by the way. So uh, after the first month, cash, well, you know what that's earning. Nothing, right? No, nothing for cash, banks. And then gold, uh, gold is up 0.74%. So if you would have taken uh, your money and put half of it in cash and half of it in gold, which of course you would never want to do, but let's imagine you did. For the month, you'd be up 0.37%, or that's about 4.5% per year is what that works out to be. So uh, that's not so shabby. Uh, let's see how the other sectors did that, that my baby here did not pick. Yeah, you chose. So she did not pick. Here's what she didn't pick. Uh, she didn't pick U.S. stocks. Well, guess what? Those are up 0.44%, so those are doing okay. She did not pick international stocks. Now, that was a mistake. International stocks are up 2.5% for the month since we did this. I mean, that's amazing. Uh, but then she also did not pick real estate. Now, this may come as a surprise to you, but real estate's actually down 3%, 3.22%. She did not pick the healthcare sector. Now, I know a lot of you, especially if you're retired, you are big fans of the healthcare sector because it's done so well historically. And I know you're thinking, you know, healthcare is just going to be used more and more. And, you know, with an aging population, all the advances, that that's where the money is. Well, guess what? That sector's down 3.5% in the last month. So if you do the math, if you were to put your money in, U.S. stocks, international stocks, real estate, and healthcare, say 25% in each of those categories, you'd be down almost 1%, 0.92%, uh, so which is the equivalent of being down 11% for the whole year. So basically, my girl here, she picked cash and gold. We kind of, I mean, let's be honest, we made a little fun of her, right? She picked cash and gold, but she actually picked the winners. Uh, overall, I mean, her portfolio of cash and gold, after a whole month of measurement, you never measure anything after a month, of course, but we do on the show for my baby banks, uh, she is beating the other sectors quite handily so far. Now, we're going to kind of check in on this from time to time. I know uh, she was a little depressed when uh, she picked Nike and it didn't beat Warren Buffett's investing, so she's a little down on that. But uh, now... Uh, with this approach, uh, maybe she's doing a little better, and uh, maybe she'll uh, give us some uh, fun additional picks as the year goes on. So, folks, if you have questions uh, on some of these topics, questions about anything, always feel free to give us a call. You've worked hard for your money, and your best is yet to come. You've reached a point where you don't put your money at risk anymore. The road ahead doesn't scare you because your money is secure and working for you. Centennial Wealth Advisory, Portfolio Stability, Tax Reduction Strategies, Lifetime Income, Financial Security in Any Economy. Essential financial strategies for a comfortable retirement. Join the Centennial Wealth Advisory team for an informative and exciting presentation with complimentary gourmet dinner and learn how to protect your assets from market volatility, how to plan your retirement, the best ways to generate lifetime income, how to safeguard your assets from unnecessary taxation, the difference between retirement advisors and Wall Street advisors, why getting a second opinion may be your most important financial decision, and much more. Choose the date and location that works best for you. Wednesday, November 2nd at Otsego Club in Gaylord. Thursday, November 17th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. 
Presentations start at 6 p.m. and are free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. But seating is limited and fills quickly. Call 888-608-5825 or visit send-wealth.com to reserve your seats today. There's no cost and no obligation. Don't miss this important presentation, Essential Financial Strategies for a Comfortable Retirement. Call 888 888- 608 5825 today. All right, folks, this week I want to ask you the question Is your IRA, 401k, 403b, etc., are those traditional retirement accounts, are they really good accounts for retirement or are they maybe some of the Worst accounts you can have for retirement. Well, it kind of depends how you look at things, I guess. But what I want to share with you are from a tax perspective, I'm going to share with you four reasons. Four reasons that your IRA, your 401k, 403b, etc., are actually the worst accounts you can have as a retiree. All right? Four reasons. Ready? Here we go. Reason number one. Reason number one. Every time you pull money out of that IRA, You know this, you pay tax. What rate do you pay tax at? Your effective rate? No, you pay tax at whatever your highest marginal rate is. So whatever your rate is, whatever your mark, if you're in the 15% tax bracket, every dollar comes out at 15. If you're at 25, every dollar comes out at 25. Whatever your highest tax bracket is, that's the tax you pay as the money comes out. Okay, reason number two. Reason number two is simply this. I call it double taxation. Now, what do I mean? When you pull money out of your IRA, that goes on the front page of your tax turn, on the front page of your tax return, rather, as an entry. It's an income entry on that return. As a result, it affects, in many cases, the amount of tax you pay on your Social Security. So what happens is, here's the net effect. Not only do you pay tax on the money uh, that comes out of your IRA, that same distribution in many cases forces you to pay more tax on your Social Security than you otherwise would have to pay. So you're hit twice uh, with taxes on the same distribution. All right, let's go to number three. Do you know that your retirement plan, IRA, 401, K, 403B, et cetera. Do you know that that is the only type of account, the only type of account that forces you to pull money out once you hit the age of 70 and a half? You've got to pull money out every year, even if you don't want to. If you want to pull it or not, doesn't matter. You're forced to pull a certain amount out every single year starting at age 70 and a half, the year in which you turn 70 and a half. And then every year thereafter for the rest of your life, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger every single year. It's very annoying to people who are in that time of their lives. I can promise you that. And let's go to reason number four. Guys, I know that you, you're thinking, in the back of your mind anyway, you're thinking, you're probably going to die before your wife does. Right? You probably are. And I know that you want to make sure that she is financially secure for the rest of her life. So if your wife lives longer than you, you want her to be secure. My wife, Becky, she's six years younger than me, seven years younger than me, depending on the date. But she's a few years younger. I'm probably going to go first. Well, I don't want to leave her destitute. I want to make sure she's in good shape. Well... Think about this. Let's imagine you have a big IRA or 401k. You got half a million dollars, a million dollars in one of these things, and you're thinking, she's going to be set. Well, think about what happens when you leave your surviving spouse a big IRA. You have just left an account that, where every distribution is taxable, big old taxable liability, in in essence, to someone who is going to become a single taxpayer, someone whose tax rates are going to go through the roof. That's a great idea. Let's leave a big old taxable account to someone who's going to suddenly pay a bunch of taxes. Good job. No, leave her life insurance. It's tax-free. Way better deal. So here you go. Four reasons that from a tax perspective, 
IRAs and their kin are not so great, right? Remember what they were. Every distribution is taxable. It double taxed a lot of times because it affects Social Security, only account you're forced to pull money out of, and really worst type of account you can leave to a surviving spouse. All right. What should you do? I want you to think about Roth conversions. They could be really helpful. Now, if you have any questions about what we talked about here, I want you to just pick up the phone, call us. We'd love to help you out. It has always been important to us here at Centennial Wealth Advisory to give back to the wonderful Northern Michigan community where Larry, Art, and I were born and raised. Here at Centennial Wealth Advisory, we have always had a soft spot for children. Amongst our team here, there are many children, grandchildren, and special nieces and nephews. Over the past couple of years, Centennial Wealth Advisory and many of its clients have been proud supporters of Bethany Christian Services and their efforts to help children right here in Northern Michigan. Our very own Art Canfield and his wife Michelle have helped foster children through Bethany and in November 2015 adopted an amazing little guy, Braden. It's remarkable to see the difference they've made in his life over the past couple of years. We're extending an invitation to you to come and join us on Tuesday, October 25th to learn more not only about Bethany Christian Services and the children's and families' lives they've impacted, but also from estate planning attorney Mike Swagger and the expertise he offers when you're looking to support any nonprofit organization. Centennial Wealth Advisory's Larry Flynn will also be sharing the retirement planning and tax benefits of supporting charitable organizations. We assure you there's no required gifting or donations. This is simply intended to be an educational event to help you understand the great benefits you can enjoy during and after your lifetime by supporting charitable organizations. We truly hope you'll take advantage of this great opportunity. Essential financial strategies for a comfortable retirement. Join the Centennial Wealth Advisory team for an informative and exciting presentation with complimentary gourmet dinner and learn how to protect your assets from market volatility, how to plan your retirement, the best ways to generate lifetime income, how to safeguard your assets from unnecessary taxation, the difference between retirement advisors and Wall Street advisors. Why getting a second opinion may be your most important financial decision and much more. Choose the date and location that works best for you. Wednesday, November 2nd at Otsego Club in Gaylord. Thursday, November 17th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. Presentations start at 6 p.m. and are free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. But seating is limited and fills quickly. Call 888-608-5825 or visit send-wealth.com to reserve your seats today. There's no cost and no obligation. Don't miss this important presentation, Essential Financial Strategies for a Comfortable Retirement. Call 888 608 5825 today. Hello, welcome to Coffee Talk. My name is Larry Flynn. I'm here with Art Canfield and John Torbett, my colleagues. Um, in, in the course of a day and a lot of our meetings, we get questions all the time, and we just want to take an opportunity to maybe answer some of those here on the show. Um, so let's do that, guys. Okay. John, one of the first ones that comes to my mind that sure. we've heard recently is, um, Mike talks a lot about on a television show about volatility, you know, the goods and bads of volatility. Um, you know, why should I avoid, avoid that and how do I deal with it? Right. I mean, ultimately, when you're coming up to retirement and everything, there's there's a transition. You're, you've been in what we call sort of the growth and accumulation phase of your life, where maybe you've you've seen the ups and downs, but you thought, hey, I've got time here on, on my side where I'm going to be working for another 10, 20, 30 years. But then retirement, it's more of this shift to more preservation and income mode. So that's where now this volatility piece needs to be reduced ultimately, right? Because you're wanting to preserve that money and generate an income 
income stream. So that's where really like standard deviation comes into play. Yeah, what you know, what do we see people come in? They're always talking about their average, right? Mm -hmm. They look at their mutual funds, they look, here's what it's performed over a period of time, here's the average return, right? What they don't recognize is that if that, that account's had any volatility associated with it all, especially in the negative, they're not getting the real return they think they are. You know, Mike's done this on the show, right? If I, if I had an account that made 50% one year, 50% the ne or lost 50% the second year, made 50% the third year, and maybe lost 50% the fourth year, when you do the math on that, that account averaged zero, but it had a real loss of almost 43% in that four-year period. Right. You know, uh, what's, what's, but if you take that same, you take a different account and it gets basically 0% every year, it also averaged zero, but you would have not lost any money. Right. The investment <laughs> world that everybody lives in now, it seems like everybody is so focused on average return. And when, when it all boils down, especially the, in these volatile times that we live in now, um, really since 2000, it's just a different ball game. It's a different playbook that you have to pay by, especially when you're pulling income. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny, uh, if you would have had an account that just would have made just a little over 4% since year 2000, you would have outperformed everybody in the market taking all the risk and volatility associated with it, right? Right. right. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing people don't understand. And then the other thing they don't understand is if you're especially taking income from that portfolio, it's even more imperative, right? Oh, most definitely. And that, that leads us to the next question here. And Art, I'll come to you with this. What is a safe amount to take out of my savings for income? I hear all kinds of different numbers. Boy, for the, some, the person that's about to retire or wanting to retire, that's a question we get all the time because that's their lifestyle, right? That's what they're going to live on between maybe Social Security if they're lucky enough to have a pension and then this withdrawal rate that's coming out of their savings. Um, you know, that safe withdrawal, if you read the reports, it can vary from anywhere from like 1% on up to upwards of 5%. But, you know, I think with our company here with Centennial Wealth, when we structure it properly, and going back to what you guys have talked about the last question, when you avoid that volatility, you should be able to get that 5% withdrawal rate, and that's based upon your total portfolio. Most people are okay with that. You know, if I'm making 5 6%, pulling 5%, they're fairly happy that I'm being able to conserve my nest egg, keep that savings. The danger lies when you're taking too much risk, right, guys? Mm -hmm. You take too much risk, and then all of a sudden, it's not so such a pretty picture after a negative year. Yeah, the key thing that Art said is when structured properly there. I mean, it, it's, it really is, we talked about it before, your, your growth and accumulation phase, maybe you're taking on that risk. But when it comes to preservation and income for retirement planning, that's where it, it's a whole different ball game, and that's sort of what we specialize here at Centennial Wealth Advisory is more preserving your assets. You're still getting positive returns over time, but it's it's reducing that volatility factor because you can't you can't live with a 30, 40 percent loss. That that means you potentially need to go back to work, and so that's something that we we need to stay away from. Yeah, wasn't it late 90s? The safe withdrawal rate for a traditional stock bond portfolio, maybe 50-50, was like anywhere between four and five percent. Today, you know, fast forward 16 years, and now that safe withdrawal rate for that 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 atypical portfolio is like 1.7 right. percent. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. For most but, people, that's unacceptable. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, thank you again for joining us uh, for Coffee Talk. Uh, if you have any questions you want to ask, uh, certainly call our office and shoot them, boy, and we'd be glad to answer them. So, thank you. Thanks everyone for watching the show today. Now if you have any questions, feel free to call our office or visit our website. And remember, you only retire once. So let's get it right the first time. We'll see you next week.